Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Color Mixing with Chris. We are here at Creative Text Colors. I'm Chris Arpin. And today we are going to continue on yet again with another basically candy color theory video. Um, as long as you guys keep sending us tech questions and, and questions that we can kind of get behind and, and are kind of pick our brain, we're going to keep doing uh, videos that kind of answer some of these questions. And one of those was how to do a candy copper. So we kind of talked amongst ourselves in terms of copper and, and really what, what was meant by the copper. Because um, obviously we do have a copper metallic, we have a copper pearl color, um, but a candy copper. So is that the actual tint of the candy or the actual representation of, of copper? So we kind of did a little bit of playing around. We did some spray outs um, and we kind of came up with something that we were really happy with and I think is actually a pretty cool color. And I tried to streamline that process as much as I could to make it as easy as I can. And again, I, I talk about repeatability and consistency, knowing what your uh, ratios are going to be versus what you're spraying over for your ground coat. Um, if you guys have seen any of the other candy videos we do, um, we kind of try to, to get drive that same point across. Try to think outside the box in terms of your first coat, your ground coat, basically what is going to kind of tint that candy and then work out from there. So we're going to kind of give two different scenarios. One over our silver sealer, which is kind of our, our universal candy base. It's our bright silver sealer uh, and it's a great base coat for all of our candies. Um, it gives a bright, bright finish for the candy. So we'll do a mixture of candy over that. But then we're also going to cover kind of a cocktail um, base coat to kind of tint that ground coat. Um, and to do that, we're going to get right into it. To do that, we're going to actually use, so I talked about silver sealer, the 6013 silver sealer. I actually tinted my silver sealer with our Wicked Crimson. So I really kind of wanted a, 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 a maroon, kind of a deep red uh, color. So I, the first time, I, and I'll tell you guys how I kind of went through this process, um, I used our Wicked Red and I tinted the silver sealer with the Wicked Red, and the Wicked Red kind of washed out. It kind of got to be kind of a magenta color, kind of like really light, a little more rosy than I wanted. So I just went with the Crimson, which is a little bit darker, and rather than having four other mixes and, and, and ingredients kind of in that base, I just figured, you know what, we'll stick with this. Again, it's pretty simple, so it was a two-to-one mix, so two parts silver sealer to one part Wicked Crimson. So we'll put that over here. Uh, after we, we kind of messed around with that, I came up with different scenarios in terms of the candies. Um, so when we do this, when we spray, we're going to spray our lemon yellow, neat, right over these. Neat meaning just straight up, right? So lemon yellow mixed with our 4050 over that kind of red. Uh, and, and I already have an example right here. This is actually an example we did a while back. This is our lemon yellow over our silver sealer. So this is four coats of lemon yellow over a silver sealer. Uh, I got my light, you guys can see here. You can see that. And actually, uh, it's something we talked about before. Because the lemon yellow is it's kind of a weaker candy, uh, over silver, sometimes it has a tendency to kind of have a green kind of a shift to it. It kind of picks up the blue tendency from that silver uh, and kind of tint the, the, the yellow a little bit green shade. And then right next to it, I have our red oxide, our Candy 2O red oxide, which is a really rich red a little more brown shade, if you will, in terms of the color. Uh, and this is over the silver sealer as well. So you kind of see these are the two candies that we're going to mix to kind of create this copper finish. So again, silver sealer, lemon yellow, it's really bright, uh, and the red oxide. Now the reason between these two is uh, something I want to talk about real quick too. Uh, when we choose candies, or at least here when we're kind of going through mixing options and trying to uh, develop a specialty color or try to match something or kind of more specific, I kind of want to uh, start with a, a clean base candy. And I say clean, this is the lemon, uh, excuse me, the lemon yellow is a very uh, simple, straight up uh, candy, right? So there's nothing in it to tint it in terms of our, like the tequila yellow, has, it's a little more brown shade, uh, or like our grabber orange is kind of a blend of candies as well. So sometimes when you're starting to mix these candies together, some of the other tints that are in that candy sometimes have a tendency to come through over different substrate colors, and it might make it a little muddy looking. It might, it might look good in the initial spray, but once you start layering, you start to bring out a color that you didn't necessarily think was going to come out when you were applying that candy. So 
Uh, for this, I kind of tried to get a simple blend of our red oxide and our lemon yellow. So it's very little um, in the mix in terms of what is actually in the red oxide to make red oxide and obviously the yellow because the yellow is pretty much clean right out of the bottle. So that's just something to keep in mind, you know, trying to like, think outside the box in terms, like I said, just less is more in terms of coming up with that mixture. Um, so what we're going to do is I have my popsicle sticks ready to go. And uh, we're going to spray a couple base colors. I'm going to show you guys the mixture of that silver sealer and the uh, that crimson color. So we'll do that first. And then we're going to spray a couple of these with silver sealer for the, the second part, which is going to be just the application of a, of a more tinted candy over that silver sealer. So if you wanted to do the silver sealer as your ground coat, if you're doing something smaller, maybe you, you just kind of wanted to keep it simple and just spray a tinted candy over the top rather than a mixing a ground coat to, to work up to if it was too much material to apply. So we're kind of going to cover both, both aspects of that. So I'm going to go get my mixing cups and uh, we'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, welcome back. Got my mixing cup um, and we're going to start mixing this ground coat. So like I mentioned, it is silver sealer and our Wicked Crimson. So I'm going to do two to one. So two parts silver sealer to one part crimson. So again, I kind of went through and uh, tried a bunch of different variations, I guess you could call it, in terms of the, the formula and how we were going to achieve this color. Uh, and it, I kind of wanted to keep it simple, right? So again, in terms of what the mix is or how many ingredients uh, you have in your, re your recipe, uh, keep it streamlined, keep it simple, and it's going to be a lot more consistent and repeatable. So I right up to my two line, and I'm going to one with my Wicked Crimson. So two to one, simple ratio. And really what we're trying to create is just kind of a metallic maroon color, more of a, a not so much red, a little, a little darker, a maroon. The big thing is if you start with a really dark color, your candy's going to inherently be dark only because you're going to bring through that, that nature of the, the, the dark color. So this is kind of where the silver sealer shines because the silver is going to help brighten that up and give you a little more reflective uh, property in that base coat. And the guys that have sprayed silver sealer before, you know how really bright and intense that that color is in terms of the, the, the flake that's in there. So it's a great, again, a great base for all of our candies. So when you guys are doing this, make sure you see, I'm kind of looking at the sides of the cup here. I'm really trying to make sure that all of my silver is mixed in with the red. So I have just about six ounces. So we're gonna go 10% of our 4011 reducer which is just about a half an ounce there at 10%. So it's right about there. We're going to let this sit. I'm going to mix this up. Anytime you guys know, if you've, you've heard me do these videos before, we talk about adding the reducer and really letting it sit for at least two minutes. Ideally, if you can let it sit for like 10 minutes, it's awesome because these are going to mix. Everything's going to kind of marry together and get a nice, nice, even mixture of reducer. Let everything kind of become one in terms of that even reduction. It kind of helps get rid of the surface tension that you have in the paint when you hit it with a reducer right in the beginning. It's not like a solvent-based paint where as soon as you hit it with reducer, it kind of skates it right out. The water takes a little bit longer to kind of break everything down and become more uniform. So I'm going to go get my cup ready to go. Um, the silver sealer, when we spray the silver, on these guys, it's the same thing. It's the silver sealer straight out of the bottle, 10% reduction. So that's exactly what I just did here. 10% you know, reducer, 4011. So I'm going to mix that up too. We're going to come back and we're going to spray our ground coats on our speed shapes. All right, guys, welcome back. I have my color ready to go in my gun. And uh, this is coat number one. As you can see, it is a metallic red. It's a little, a little bit kind of a rosy color. This is only the first coat, you can see, but it's got a really nice sparkle effect and that's due to that silver sealer. So I'm going to go ahead and do three coats of this. All right, everyone, welcome back. We are all done spraying our base coats. Um, and like I said, we didn't want to 
catch me spraying all three coats of each because it's kind of redundant and boring when you guys don't want to be bored. So this is the red, totally dry, and this is the silver, totally dry. So we're going to spray the mixture um, that we have over the silver as well, but I'm going to save one for that separate candy mixture, like I said, if you were going to use a silver base. Um, we already know what the silver does with lemon yellow, so we're not going to spray lemon yellow over that, but we'll spray the, uh, the concoction that we have. So we're going to talk about the candy concoction. So for this particular color, for this copper color, uh, when I mixed, I, I did it a bunch of different ways. You saw those cards I had on the table before. They were kind of let down, my own let down panels, my own test panels uh, to see where I liked the color and how fast I was going to build color. Um, and, and I kind of settled on basically a six to one mix. So six to one being six parts lemon yellow to one part uh, red oxide. So it seems, doesn't seem like a lot, right? Just a little bit of red oxide, but it actually the red oxide is so strong, you can even see in the bottle, you know, the, the purity of the, the, the lemon yellow, it's probably one of the weakest that we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and do six. And this my mixing cup right here is perfect because I already have a six to one ratio on there. So I'm gonna go six right here. And I'm gonna go one part of the red oxide. And you can see how fast that uh, little bit of red oxide just kind of blasts that candy right down. So I'm gonna mix this up really well. And I don't know if you can see if I kind of drag this up on the side of the cup here. You see that, that tint. It's got a nice kind of a, I want to say orange, but it's not orange like our, our grabber orange, and it's not as brown yellow as our tequila yellow. So it's, it is really a really cool uh, color just by itself. So one of the things you guys can do is if you're doing something similar to this, um, keep your candies. If you mix a candy like this, keep it in another bottle. If you have an extra bottle, like if you had a leftover bottle of lemon yellow, just give it a quick little rinse out and pour this mixture right into it. As long as you're not mixing it with the 4050, it's just the candy mix. You can store these. If you have a specialty color that you did that, you know, you tinted something, keep that. Don't throw it out, you know, save it. Um, so these are totally mixed here. And now if you guys are familiar with any of the candies, even this one here for this video, I'm going to stick with the six to one ratio. That means I'm going to do six parts of my 4050 to one part of my candy. So six to one. So the fact that I have another mixing cup is nice because I'm going to actually go ahead and put in my 4050. We're going to go right to, for what we're doing right around that three mark on the six to one. Now I have a strainer right here. Again, when I'm mixing candies, 125 microns. This is a really, really fine strainer. Uh, this is the finest, I, I believe, that you can get, uh, and it's great for the candies. Because these are so thin, as you can see, you want something really fine to kind of trap any kind of particles or anything that's dried. You know, Again, we talked about it before, sometimes under the caps and the lids here, you have a tendency to get some dried candy. You can see at the top, the last thing you want is that getting into your paint. So always strain your candies, whether they're brand new or not. Just It's, a good, it's, it's cheap insurance to ensure that you don't have anything passing through when you're spraying, and especially when you're spraying a candy, any of those little chunks or anything in there that, that you don't strain out, it's gonna look like dirt in your paint, and it's, gonna, it's not gonna go away. So if you get something in the finish, you, you're kinda, you gotta start from square one again. So, 125, we're gonna pass through here. We're gonna go right up to my one mark, so it's a six to one ratio, and that is right on the money. Now again, we're using PPS cups, but the PPS strainers, if you guys have, again, have seen other videos we've done, I'm using a 200 micron strainer, though those are uh, solvent-based uh, lids and liners that we're using, um, only because they're a little bit more universal. They work well with our sealers, they work well with all our paints. So anytime I'm spraying metallics, I'm a little finer with a strainer, I use a 190. And again, the candies, I'm using a 125. So, I'm gonna mix this up really well. And uh, at a six to one ratio, because I'm using a bigger spray gun, this is a one two, uh, you can see right here the viscosity of this. 
we get a lot of questions on reduction. At six to one, that flow is really nice right off the stick, so there's really no reason to reduce this. So the consistency of this paint is, is ideal, and that's another nice thing about that six to one. That's kind of my go-to ratio. If you guys have seen the other videos, like I mentioned, six to one is kind of my go-to across the board. Um, I did mention that the lemon yellow is a little bit weaker. Sometimes you can get away with a four to one. And same thing with our poison green, that's lighter. Um, you can sometimes get away with a four to one, but my general rule of thumb is a six to one ratio. It works extremely well. Uh, it's a good starting point. And you can always add more 40-50 if you want to make it a little bit weaker, or you can always add a little bit more candy if you want to strengthen it. But solid rule of thumb is that six to one ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and continue mixing this, make sure it's all nice and mixed. You can see in the sides of the cup here a little bit of the, the clear, a little bit of that blue tint. So we're going to make sure that's all gone. This is totally mixed up. Get it loaded in my gun, and we're going to start spraying some candy. Hi, guys. Welcome back. The booth is running, and we are ready to spray some candy. So. We're going to do the silver first. You guys can see the color over the silver. And then we're going to do that red ground coat. So this is coat number one. We'll do, probably do four coats over both of these. This is coat number one. All right, and this is over the red. So you can see it kind of goes against what you would think in terms of, of a red substrate and how that looks, that yellow, tinted yellow over the red. Really, really cool. So by the time we get about three, four coats on there, it's going to look awesome. So we're going to let this dry up. I'll be back for coat number two. Guys, we are back. Coat number one is totally dry. And if you haven't seen any of these videos before, that is key. Whenever you're, you're spraying the candies in our 4050, any of our products, you want it to be totally dry between coats. If it's wet, it's going to cause problems, so totally dry. So it's been about 10 minutes, but we're in a booth. We have really good air movement, uh, but usually about 15 minutes is probably sufficient enough. So this is coat number two. I will do real quick and show you guys what we talked about. This is the, that color over the silver sealer, and this is the lemon yellow straight up over silver sealer. So you can see there definitely is a considerable difference in what we did with a little bit of that red oxide. So big difference there. So we're going to go ahead and do code number two over our red. So that's code number two. And again, we started with that. And now we're here. Only two coats, and we have this color. So, again, super, super uh, uh, big contrast in terms of what you might think in, in terms of, wow, I'm doing a red, and it's not going to work, and where we are right now with that, that tinted color. So, big difference. And you can really see what this is going to end up looking like. Uh, and, and again, you could stop at two coats right there, and you can call that done if that's kind of what you're after. Let me grab my light. You can see. You know, that's a, a nice, rich color. It's not so orange. It's not really the tequila yellow. It's kind of that brown yellow. Uh, it's kind of right in between. It definitely has that, that copper kind of a look to it. So this is two coats. We'll go ahead and do two more once this is dry. We'll do two more of that silver. And then I'm going to do a different mixture over that silver sealer to get this a little more in line with that kind of a color with just the mixture of candies over silver. So we'll let this dry up, and we'll go two more coats. All right, everyone, welcome back. We've got four coats on both of our samples and are totally dry. Uh, real quick, we'll just kind of check these out real quick. This is that same candy over silver sealer. So you can see it's a little bit lighter in the value. It kind of has a gold, kind of more gold-esque kind of a tint to it, but it's pretty cool. And this is over that red. So you can see it really kind of brings out the red tone, and, but it's a, certainly a rich, rich color. So I thought that was a pretty cool color. And, and again, it's kind of counterintuitive of what you might think is going to happen. Now I went ahead and I had another red sample. I sprayed two reds and I just did two coats of that candy mixture over the reds. So you can kind of see the difference. So it's certainly more in the orange family. I'll grab this one here. We can kind of put them side by side. So same color candy over that red base, but this was two coats where this was the four coats. So even just by 
the saturation and how much you're spraying, you can kind of change that color. But I really did think that the, that uh, red base color uh, is a better kind of a representation of kind of coming up with this copper color. So just food for thought, I just want to show that. So I mentioned one more. Uh, we're going to use silver as our base, and we're actually going to adjust the concentration of candy. It's going to be the same two candies. It's going to be lemon yellow and red oxide, but I'm going to cut that reduction down to make it a little stronger with the red. So it's going to be four parts lemon yellow to one part red oxide, where before we did six to one. So a little bit stronger on that red side, and that's going to help kind of wash out that tendency that that lemon yellow has to be. Again, remember this is the lemon yellow right over silver. It's going to wash out that kind of green tint and it's going to make it a little bit richer. So realistically, with four coats, it should be right in this neighborhood, kind of in the same, same area. But again, I'm just doing this to kind of show what you can achieve with different mixing ratios. And, and really, the, the, the most streamlined it is going to be picking a base coat color that complements that candy mixture. Even if you do have to mix the candies, you really want to uh, kind of color key uh, a base coat. And sometimes it's not always what you might think, like especially in the case with this where we tinted that, that silver sealer to be red. Uh, if you guys have seen the uh, Dirt Track Brown video that we did, we actually tinted the Dirt Track Brown with a few different candies. And I actually, one of the, the richest in terms of getting a more brown root beer color was adding emerald green to that Dirt Track Brown to kind of cancel out that red shade. So just food for thought, keep that in mind. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and mix up that same Lemon yellow and red oxide. Like I said, we're going to go four to one. So it's going to be four parts of the lemon yellow. So we're going to go right up to that two mark on my four to one column. So I go to two. I'm going to take my red oxide and go to one. And uh, there you have it. It's that simple. Again, like I said, that lemon yellow is very weak in terms of strength and, and saturation. So this red is really going to knock it down pretty quick. And now, if, if you're familiar with the candies, if you guys have sprayed a bunch of these candies before, you kind of might be thinking, man, isn't that like tequila yellow? I actually have a sample, uh, another one of these discs, and we'll, we'll look at it afterwards once this is all sprayed, of the tequila yellow, because that's initially kind of one of the colors we were thinking of we were trying to make this copper color. And the tequila yellow is close, but it's certainly, this, this color, this tint is going to be certainly different than the tequila yellow and a grabber orange. So we'll kind of do a comparison once we're all done. So that's my four to one right there. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing that we did with a six to one ratio, right? So 40-50, six parts 40-50. Go right about to there. Now this is an opportunity for me to strain. And I'm gonna go right up to that one mark. So there's my six to one. I'm gonna mix this up really good. And when we come back, we'll be spraying candy. All right guys, welcome back. Color is in the cup and we are ready to spray. So this is coat number one. Hey guys, we're back. Coat number one is dry. I'm going to do coat number two. And like I mentioned, we're probably going to go four coats, so everything's the same. We'll do four coats across the board. So we'll show you guys coat number two, and we will see you guys back at the bench when we're all done. All right, guys, welcome back. We are pretty much ready to wrap this video up. Uh, real quick, we'll just go over what I have in front of me. This is the last one that we just sprayed. So this was the four coats of that four to one, so four parts lemon yellow to one part red oxide over the silver sealer. So you can see that extra amount of red oxide really kind of helped punch up that, that uh, red kind of an undertone, which is kind of synonymous with, with a copper. It's not quite orange, it's not quite gold. And then we'll have, this is the first mix that we did, that six to one mix over silver sealer as well. So we got a side by side, we can kind of see. So big difference there, you can see this one's a little more gold, or that one's a little more red. So just to kind of give you guys an idea what is
capable uh, with your mix ratios. These are both four coats. So everything here was four coats with the exception of this guy that we already kind of showed you. I'll show you one more time just to refresh your memory. This was the two coats and this was four coats and this was over that red kind of base that we created with our silver sealer and our wicked carmine or crimson, I'm sorry, wicked crimson. So again, just by what you can achieve in terms of your, the number of coats here uh, or just the base color. So what we also said, what I mentioned was I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you in comparative uh, terms where we were with just our straight up um, stock, what we would call our stock candies, right? So this is dirt track brown compared to these. And it's certainly more red over the silver, but it doesn't kind of fall into any of these categories, right? This is the grabber orange. Now this would be the closest to any of these. But still, you know, again, the, the grabber orange has a, a richer kind of a red quality to it. And these are, are kind of in between that, kind of like a mix between a, a gold and orange. Then we have tequila yellow. And again, definitely more gold than any of these guys. And then you remember this is our lemon yellow and this is the red oxide. So these are the two kind of ingredients and I can show you real quick the red oxide obviously is going to be, be red. So again, none of these colors are what we would say like a stock candy when just taking a candy right off the shelf. So it, it, I think what we have is kind of a good indication of what you can achieve, what you can do. Uh, we'll get some 2K clear over the top of these and uh, we'll take a break. We'll get outside, see if we can grab some sunlight and just kind of see what these look like outside cleared. But uh, I think that about wraps this one up. So we'll see you guys outside. All right, guys, welcome back. We're about ready to finish this off. And we're going to try to do this quick because it is really cold out here. Um, this was that first mixture that I did with that tinted uh, silver sealer. So this is the silver sealer mixed two to one with that wicked crimson. So it gave us that red base color and this was the difference of the the four coats versus two coats so again out in the sun I mean that's a pretty major difference from kind of going from that golden yellow to a little more orange kind of a coppery kind of a look so that was just initially done just to show kind of the difference between the two coats and four coats so remember everything we did on all these was all four coats with the exception of that one obviously so that was that was that initial mix that was uh, six to one so it was six parts lemon yellow to one part red oxide for the candy so it was a six to one mix over that tinted base so i'm going to put these down and we'll move on to the next one which was this guy right here this was the one that we did the six to one mix over silver sealer neat so the silver sealer was straight out no tint we didn't have a red base on that this one looks pretty cool we did four coats as well, so it was a six to one mix, that lemon yellow and red oxide. But what I found was if you wanted to richen that up a little bit, if you guys remember, this is that last one I did where I actually went ahead and I mixed the, the uh, uh, lemon yellow and the red oxide at a four to one ratio. So a little bit more red oxide to richen it up. So this is, again, this is four coats over silver sealer. So again, you kind of see that big difference in just what you can do in tinting that candy. So depending on the look you're after, depending on that, that kind of that what you would consider a copper kind of a tone, you can see you can get quite a few different effects. So for color mixing with Chris, I'm Chris Arpin, Create Text Colors. Thanks for checking us out and we'll see you guys next time.